most people in life are born with all their fingers and all their toes and everything functioning and everything is well goes what I mean is that there's no trouble taking a toilet break there's no trouble taking a potty break there's no trouble taking any kind of break of any kind of in inappropriate or appropriate sexual encounter you know but there are some people in life that have a birth defect we know them as people with special needs we know them as people on the spectrum we know them as people with Asperger's and autism and Down syndrome we also know there's other plenty of other types of diseases that people profess profess to have in life they are literally cellular degenerations that have occurred in life one of the tragedies of life is a special birth defect that most people don't call a birth defect they label it everything other than it is they loop it in with sexuality which should not really be being discussed in the public life and openly it's inappropriate to even talk about it in life you see our genitalia is a private thing it is not open for some little peep show of some little boy to walk in your house while you're sleeping and pick up your shirt or pull down your pants and look at you in life we don't do that but there is a condition that everybody wants to, to, to apply as like the new gay thing, and it's not. It is a special condition that has happened inadvertently or accidentally through the womb and through the channel because of some sort of condition, some sort of estrogen poisoning, some sort of testosterone poisoning. It's hard to say in some cases. But openly people want to tout nature versus nurture, and that's not the truth either. The soul is the soul. And what the soul is, is the soul. The Lord places the soul in the child. We learn that from great animation films from Mexico and Latin America, much better than probably our own. But what we've also seen in Kevin can, Kev, and, and Heaven Can Wait, an old marvelous film that had a great gait, is that openly that sometimes in life replacements occur. And what I mean is that if someone is put in an accident and before they're supposed to die, sometimes they can come back in a different way, and people know that. We know that people believe in reincarnation. We know that we believe in karma that can produce a condition. But let's get back to the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to take your soul and upraise it to the roof in the way that God wants you to. To be as beautiful in the world as you can, to be as handsome in the world as you can, to be as well fit in the world as you can, to, to handle food as well as you can, to literally be able to physically function as long as you can, and openly that's true. So when you have a physical birth defect condition that's in the genitalia realm, we don't simply walk around the neighborhood and display it out there. Because in America, we are not a naked society. We might have nude beaches different places that are labeled nude beaches, and the people who are there are usually the people you don't want to see anyway, naked. And I'm just being facetious. But I have heard that from other people who go to nude beaches. I am not one of those people. I was raised by turn-of-the-century parents, where modesty was something that we all were to uphold. I was also raised by a father who said, you know, a woman who knows how to dress is a classy lady. A woman that doesn't know how to keep her clothes on herself and wants to reveal all of herself is not a one that he wanted to meet for me. You see, there's two types of girls, according to the world, and there's probably a lot more than that in between the spectrum. I can certainly attest to that for the number of different types of sports events that I went to supporting girls, even hockey, which was sort of marvelous for me. And I had a colleague that was producing that uh, new festivities with a girls team and I was okay with that and she was a marvelous marketing girl and she had a marvelous husband but that's not the point or living I can't remember now but the point is that in life when it comes to sex and sexuality that does involve our genitalia but sexuality is not a sex birth defect so let's be clear I don't like the looping of all these fucking letters because my attitude is your sex life is yours my sex life is mine and I'm not about to fucking talk about my sex life with you at any time it's inappropriate to talk about it in business, in, inappropriate to talk about it in personal business, and frankly, it's an intimate apparel. And what I mean is, intimacy is between two people, usually. And if somebody monkeys in and actually steps in or oversteps their boundaries to walk in in the middle of intimacy, it's an embarrassment to everyone. And it ruins relationships. So let's talk clearly about the genitalia. It is a privacy issue. But let's move back to the topic at hand for those of you who are still hanging on in this land. That what I'm talking about is the genitalia are private. So why the motherfucker are we labeling people trans? The soul is a soul. If the soul is a girl, it's a girl. If the soul is a boy, it's a boy. If it's somewhere in the middle of the spectrum, okay, I'm not sure God's pleased with that. But openly, don't fucking try to confuse people in the world of what you want to be. Pick a side. I don't give a fuck what side you pick. Pick a side. And present yourself in the best clothing you can. Present yourself as the best person in that world. And do it right. But don't fucking tell me that I got to give you a new label because you don't want to do it right. 
My understanding from the historic works on this condition is that it is a physical birth defect, that the soul is clearly the soul, that the male is clearly the male, the girl is clearly the girl, but there's a problem in the womb, and something happens that alters that genitalia in some way. Sometimes we get intersex, sometimes we get double sex, I don't know. I don't understand all the, the technicalities of the chemistries and of the biologies and of the physicalities that a doctor who's a specialist and those sort of things might know. Some fucking lay doctor out in some Pogodonk town in the middle of buttfuck America doesn't know these things. He's just going to do his little black and white attitude is that we are a binary system. And that might be true to a point. But what I know about God is that he likes diversity, he likes colorfulness, and he likes a lot of people. And when he does that, he does it right. But sometimes birth defects occur. So let's stop fucking talking about trans people and let's just call them a girl a girl and a boy a boy. And if the girl is a little bit masculinized in her musculature, tough shit. Some guy's going to like her just fine. And if the fella is a little bit soft in the, in the middle or a little bit plump around the chest, who gives a shit? There's something called gynomastia that occurs, occurs in men that's embarrassing from them from the be beginning of their life to the end. But what I'm saying to you is that there's all kinds of conditions. There's hertiritism that happens in women that gives them a mustache, and there's plenty of women who shave it and get it worse. And they shouldn't shave it. That's something my late mother would teach you. Don't shave it. It'll just make it worse. I had a friend named Linda, and she was marvelous with having a mustache, and she was totally into boys, and she was into my friends who were boys, and that was fine. But what I'm talking about is that people are people. They come with all types of genetics. They come with, com with all types of complications. They come with all types of conditions, and somebody's genitalia is not your fucking business. Whenever I hear Laverne Cox, who's a famous actress, talked about, I get really pissed off. And the reason I get motherfucking pissed off because that's a beautiful woman. So why the fuck are we still calling her something trans? It's not my business what she does or doesn't still have in her pants. She is a beautiful actress. She is a beautiful soul. And why the fuck are we not just calling her a beautiful woman? And that's all. There are plenty of men like Chaz Bono who wanted to do the whole fucking thing in front of the entire world. But it's the stupidest fucking documentary I'd ever seen. I totally had to shut it off so many fucking times. I was bored out of my mind. I couldn't believe the bitch that he was married to. And I just was like, give me a break. Mine oh mine. Now, when I say that, your life is yours, my life is mine, and what you do with your genitalia, that's on your life. If you dick around and get sick, that's on your life. If you don't dick around at all and decide to go off to be a nun, that's on your life. But what you do with your genitalia is your business. It doesn't belong in the public sector, it doesn't belong anywhere else with specialists who can help you produce, if you're a girl, a girl, and whether you're a boy, you're a boy, and you choose that on you. Not your parents, not some fucking society group, not some fucking rich rich Christian group, not some fucking Hollywood producer, you are you. And meaning you are you is that you keep your dick in your pants and you only use it with the people that you love. The same with your pussy. No offense, you keep that covered up and clean so that when it's time, it will be seen by the right man or the right girl, whatever the fuck you're into, in this world. But we don't talk about sexuality in America in public sectors. We do not talk there. We do not produce there. We do not publicize that. And these porn channels have got to go. Most of that is, is immoral, in my opinion, as a pastor who loves girls. And I'm telling you, I love women. But I know that my age does not belong interacting with a 20-year-old girl. I'm almost 50. I want a mature woman who knows what the fuck to do down there, or what to do with me, or what to do with it, or what to do in bed. And I don't want to talk anymore about this because I'm not talking about giving good head. What I'm talking about is that the condition of sex, the genitalia themselves, themselves, sorry, that's not right the way to say it, but I can be somewhat of a mockery of myself that my dick, no matter what size it is, is worth someone giving it a lick, And but it's not your business to know who that is, it's not your business to know what that is, it's not your business to know my size, and what pissed me off when I came to the champagne community of how stupid ass these black bastards are in this community. Some fucker wanted to put his hand down my pants to give me some old control of I'm in control of you, motherfucker. I don't fucking think so. You're a faggot trying to put your hands down a stranger man's pants. Now, I'm being marvelous. I'm being rude. I'm being crude on purpose. Because what I think is that the public sector has no right to talk about the genitalia in any other way than the gender of the person that is right for their soul.